Hi, I'm Jordan from the Ontario Brain Institute. We know that one in three of us will develop a brain disorder over a lifetime, but this doesn't tell the entire story. For each individual affected, they have friends, family, coworkers, and they fit in with society as a whole. But there's a lot of misunderstanding about brain disorders, so we went to the public to find out what they do know and what they don't know. Ultimately, uh, is fatal. It's very sad because this individual, she, she basically said that she lost her husband twice. So last June, uh, I mean, he became less and less cognizant of her and, every, and his surroundings and he was falling and all of a sudden that whole element of the indignity kicks in of a human being. It's a degenerative brain disease caused by uh, dying cells in your brain that kind of uh, cease to function and clog up the brain with a lot of debris. I know from first-hand experience my father suffered from Alzheimer's disease. You could tell he became non-verbal, he slowly lost, he couldn't feed himself, walk, no, no functions of normal living. I've heard that word before. Mm. I don't know very much about that at all. I don't know that much about that. Is from a lack of oxygen at birth. Cerebral palsy is often found in children that are born prematurely and it comes from um, brains not being fully formed. They're not as developed as others, so um, in terms of physical and mental abilities, um, they might far, fall behind compared to the healthy individuals. It feels unescapable and sort of feels like it's, uh, it's you and it's not you. It affects people in a way that uh, makes them not be able to get out of bed, makes them sad, makes them um, not be able to function. Or even if they get bullied, like you can go through depression because of anything, really. Maybe if you have a pet that you like a lot and they died, you can get very sad. A friend of mine, her dad, had Parkinson's disease and he lost his ability to walk, speak, had tremors. I do associate that with old age. Um, you know, it's, it's uncontrollable. I noticed they have made some progress in curing that. Hopefully the new, uh, new science will help them. I know Julius Caesar was epileptic. I know that you can have an epileptic seizure where you fall on the ground and twitch around and yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, though. So. The things that you take for granted uh, all of a sudden are taken away from you know, the, the inability to, to determine when that happens. I know that you, go, you can go on medication and so forth, but all those things have side effects. So, uh, and then because of the epileptic, uh, epilepsy, then you've got things like driving, things that you, again, take for granted have to be eliminated because of your own safety. You know, I got complaints from my teacher saying my son is overactive, but when I say, you know, did you do this, did you do that, I think it, he's not overly active, it just the teachers want them to sit quiet for an extended period of time, which is beyond the capability of the children at that age. Some kids are believed to have it, and it's about they can't sit still, and they uh, can't pay attention to certain things in school, but my opinion of it is that kids spend too long in a classroom for eight hours, and that's what we diagnose these things as ADD, but it's little boys can't sit for eight hours a day. Their potential is not always recognized because they, uh, teachers overlook, I guess, their capabilities and their talents and their skills and just sort of jump to their misbehaving, don't really give them the time of day.